Hello crafty friends, welcome to today's video. You may remember from a video I posted a few days ago that I asked in my Facebook group if anyone had any unloved dyes, dyes that they hadn't really got much use from, so that I could maybe look through my stash and see if I had any and share some ideas. So this is a type of dye that was suggested. It's not exactly the same as the one that was shared in the group, but it's the closest that I've got. And it's a semicircle with lots of flowers cut out and it hasn't got a cut line here. So it's supposed to, I suppose, cut the edge of something, make a pretty edge. So I had a play with it and this is what I came up with. So I will show you how I made this today with a few variations and share some extra design ideas towards the end of the video. So do stick around for that. But with this one, I took, where is it? A card blank. So this is five and three quarter by five and three quarter inches, smooth white cardstock. And I lay my die right at the edge of the front of the card. Now this particular die almost perfectly fits this particular card blank. But I used my T-square ruler to line it up with the edge here and the edges here and a nice, well it will be vertical by the time I've rotated the card the way up I have it. And all I did was tape that down and then run it through my electronic die cutting machine with my precision plates because this is quite an intricate die and I really needed everything to cut perfectly. And I ended up with a card blank that had this pretty edge. And then all I did was get a piece of pearlized cardstock. I think this is Crafter's Companion. And I stuck it behind there. So the inside of my card has the pearlized cardstock in there. It's double sided, so it, it looks pretty on the inside as well as the outside stuck that down then die cut some hearts from mixed media well it's not really mixed media it's just some smushed cardstock layered it with another heart from the pearlized cardstock stuck it on with a sentiment and then added some little circles that I cut out from this pink cardstock and put some glitter nouveau drops on top to act like enamel dots and it was quite easy that the longest most laborious part was poking all the little bits out of there but actually it didn't take that long so that's how i made that card so we're going to do something similar today but as i say slightly different so i've got my card blank here but instead of cutting into this card blank i thought i would just see what it was like with a panel on top so i took another card blank cut it in half ran it through my die cutting machine with this die on and then I thought I can just stick that on top of there and then I can pop some uh, mixed media behind or some more cardstock, pearlized cardstock or a different colour one behind like that. I just thought that might be an easier way of doing it, not running the whole card blank through but just running a square through to get something I can stick on the front. But I also ran the die through with some cardstock without any extra bits on it. And as I say, this bit doesn't cut. So I had to cut this with my trimmer. And that was easy enough because I thought instead of having the circle part over this side, I could have it over this side and then have some more mixed media peeking out. So I think that's what I'm going to do today. And then, as I say, I'll share a couple more ideas at the end. So I have chopped another card blank in half. So I've got a perfect panel to stick on the front. And I'm going to do my media on there. And I'm going to do smushing, I think, today. I'm not going to do it on the card because I think it will warp the card too much. So I want to keep the card blank nice and smush on another piece. And... I think I'll just do a little dot there, a little dot there with a pencil and a little dot there with a pencil so that I know how far out my semicircle is going to come for adding my 
smushing. So I'm going to go with pink again, but I'm going to do Victorian velvet. Smush that down there. Add some water. I want it to be quite faint. I don't want it to be a really intense colour. So lots of water. Pick it up with my smusher. If you want to know how to make and use a smusher, there's a video linked above and in the description. So come in just gently to start with. And I want to come a little bit out from my semicircle, but not all the way. I want to keep this clean and simple. So I want kind of half the card to be uh, uncluttered. So I'm going to give that a dry with my hairdryer, but before I do that, I'm going to roll some paper towel over to pick up the darker spots. Because as I say, I want this to be fairly light and I think I will go over with a second layer to give a bit of depth and while protecting this side of the card with my hand I'm going to spatter on a little bit of this extra paint to give some more uh, dynamism dynamism is that a word I'm sure there's a word I'm reaching for it but I can't find it so this isn't mixed media paper, it's just white cardstock, a card blank. So it has warped a bit, but if you're worried about that, you can always stick it in a heavy book or under a heavy book for a bit to flatten it out. But by the time it's stuck down on the card, it should be fine. So I think that can go on there like that. I have also cut one out of the pearlized cardstock that I used on the other card just for a bit of difference and I'm wondering if that might be better than the white one. I don't know, I think the white one looks cleaner and simpler than that one so I think we'll stick with the white one for now. So I'm going to get this all stuck together. With this card I did it gatefold with the decoration towards the right hand side. I think this card I'm going to do tent fold, so standing up like that, with the decoration coming in from the bottom, just for a bit of difference, just to see what it looks like. So I'm just going to get that all lined up nice and straight, really easy because it's a perfectly sized card blank front going on the perfectly sized card blank and to add my frilly bit my front frilly bit I'm going to use micro glue dots because it's such an intricate die I think this will be the best way of getting it held down I think I use my thingamy bob again, my scoreboard just to get everything lined up nicely. It's not quite long enough here, this die cut, so I'm just gonna trim a bit off the edge just to get it perfectly to the end of the card. So for this card, I did hearts as my focal point. But I'm going to use circles because we've got a circle going on, so we may as well. And I've cut a stitched circle from vellum. And that's going to go there, or it could go off to one side, I guess. Then I've got another stitched circle, slightly smaller, with some smushing in Victorian velvet. And then I've got a white circle that's going to sit on top there in a minute. My sentiment is going to say with love and it will go on top there. So it could go in the middle or it could go over to one side. We'll see how I feel when we get there. But before I cut my sentiment from card, I'm going to colour some card with this Victorian velvet and give it a good layering. So it's darker than the other Victorian velvet on there, which will help it stand out. And then I can just cut this and that can sit on there like that. And because it's all the same colour, it works. But because that's a bit bolder, that really becomes a focal point and pushes all of this other stuff into the background. I'm thinking with this, I'm going to pop it up on a bit of craft foam. And 
can stick that on my vellum in the middle or as in the middle as I can get it and then pop a bit of glue on the back of this one again pop that in the middle just got a bit of that Victorian velvet peeking out all the way around the edge and then a little bit of glue on the back of this where it's going to touch that middle circle like that and then this we can add with a bit of craft tape craft tape tape runner and that will all be hidden behind the solid circles but I'm thinking I do like that off to the side I like it to be I mean it's balanced but it's just a bit different now if you want to give that a bit of gloss the sentiment before you stick it down you could put some clear packing tape over it before you die cut it and then it'll be nice and shiny but I'm going to because this is quite a chunky sentiment and so it shouldn't be too fiddly to do I'm going to go over it with glossy accents And while that is still wet, I'm going to sprinkle on some chunky, iridescent mother of pearl glitter over that glossy accents so that it sticks to it. I can tap that so the rest comes off, the unwanted bit. And now that's sparkly, which is pretty. And I'm going to be sparkly for the rest of the day now. And I've got my white no white blizzard glitter drops here which will dry clear and have little iridescent bits of glitter in them once I can get it working properly to add a little bit of glitter and dimension around my focal point just a little bit something different so the big glitter is on the word there's a few extra bits I think that might do I'll just do a third one here so there are two cards same die sort of the same idea but two quite different looks I think this one I think would make a lovely wedding card this one probably would as well but I've got a couple of other ideas as promised here's another card blank and a couple of die cuts and I was thinking if you're not after something quite as clean and simple if you're not worried about having lots of white space left over you could add multiple to one card so you could do something like that you could have them coming in from the side with your focal point in the middle perhaps you could have them butting right up against each other maybe even overlapping slightly so you could do it like that or you could do it like that have it you know coming in from the other side if you just want the one if you want to maintain that white space you can actually you could come in from any side so that side that side that side or that side that would look nice you could also have just a kind of quarter coming in from either side or down there I like that the sentiment in the middle or over here to keep that space empty if you wanted even you could have another one there and another one there so you've got the four corners covered with the frilly bit and I've just noticed that there is a hole here and here which doesn't appear to be part of the pattern as such so I'm thinking it's meant to be for adding some thread or something like that obviously you'd stick these down first before doing this but you could put a bow or something there so it's actually a flat I mean you could have that on the front like that so you're not meant to undo the bow but you could somehow construct it 
so that you undo the bow and you've got the card there so that's another idea and another thing is you could back this with vellum and cut around it with scissors and then that would give you a nice subtle background you could have a bit more of a prominent bit of mixed media behind that would be muted slightly by this vellum and if you've got a few hours spare you could even inlay put some of the bits back in you could color them and add them you could even just emboss this pattern on a card front rather than die cut it by running the card and the die through the die cutting machine with the embossing configuration rather than the die cutting configuration of plates. You could stack a couple to add a dimension, so two or three of these on top of one another like that. That gives a lovely bit of dimension because you get the shadow of the edge there and I think that looks really nice. So there's plenty you could do with these as they come out of the die basically. And if you don't want to use the actual die cut on your card, you could use it as a stencil. Like that. Put some embossing paste through it, ink through it, and then you've got a nice coloured part as well that you could play with. You could stick this down onto a piece of, say, coloured cardstock, pearlised cardstock, a bit of mixed media, something smushed, something, or even something white. You could just pop something white underneath. So you could stick that down. And then you could die cut shapes from it. So you could cut a heart, you could cut a circle from it. And these are some hearts that I made exactly this way. I stuck one of these white ones down onto the pearlised cardstock, cut three hearts, you can, with this one you can get three, three hearts on, cut those out like that and then I got some lovely hearts with the pearlised cardstock in the background and some texture from the pretty white flowers on top and they would look great on a, on a card as a part of the focal point. You could die cut the sentiment from that as well. And you can do it the other way, you could put the pearlised on top and have the white as the background and cut those out. So if you feel like a die has got to the end of its lifespan for you, so maybe you've made a load of cards with it as it was intended, you know, you've cut it out and made a flap or, or what have you, you can still use it, you can still use the pattern and get even more out of it, more lifespan out of your dies by thinking about how you can use the pattern rather than the piece as a whole. So there you go, two cards made using this die, a couple of embellishments, a different look for each card and some extra ideas. So I hope you found that helpful. If you've got a troublesome die languishing in your stash and you'd like some ideas on how to use it, do come over to my Facebook group. There's a link in the description. Um, post a picture of your die and we'll you know brainstorm some ideas and maybe i've got something in my stash that i could use in a video that will also give you some ideas and everyone else too right i think i'll leave it there today thank you for watching do subscribe if you want to see more from me and i'll see you back here very soon bye for now